Hey everybody, we're sitting here today with the 4th Arrow Carbon Arm, which is super lightweight. Their shoulder system and their bracket system right here. And uh, we're going to show you guys why we're so excited to take this into the field next year, as well as give you a few tips about self-filming. So out of the box, one of the first things you need to know is how to put this bracket on the tree. You're going to loop both ends of this ratchet strap around these bars right here come around the tree, ratchet it to the tree, very simple, and then you're going to slide and lock this shoulder system into the bracket. The shoulder system is one of the most innovative things that I've seen as far as the camera arm market goes in a long time. This right here is going to allow you to put it on nearly any tree, any branch, and any angle and, and level it out completely. That way you have smooth level pans and rock solid video. So when we roll into the field, we usually have this fluid head right here attached to the arm. The camera would be off of the, the fluid head here as we pack in. And so you just take this arm, you slide it right into that bracket right there. Very easy. And then you would take it very carefully because you're 20 feet in the air plus, slide this in on the quick plate onto the fluid head and lock it in once it clicks. And you're good to go, you're safe. So once you get your camera on the fluid head, you're going to need to readjust the level. Right here on the shoulder is your adjustment and you've got a level right here on the shoulder as well. Now we've got one here on our fluid head which is really nice because at the point of the camera we know exactly how level we are. Now if you're interested in self-filming, which you probably are if you're watching this video, you may or may not know, but you don't just attach the camera arm to the camera. We've got a fluid head here as we explained earlier. And what the fluid head does is it allows for very fluid movements as you can see from side to side. So as you guys know, a deer can typically walk through a window very quickly and you want to be able to have very fluid movement that way as well as you're up and down here. You can see how fluid that is. You have your adjustments here and this can get really tricky when you're doing self-filming stuff. So you need to get up in a stand and practice a little bit at some point during the off season. Let's talk about the bracket placement here. You have to decide whether you're going to be standing or sitting when you're shooting. And at that point, I like to put it about hip high. It usually puts a DSLR style platform or a mirrorless style platform at an intersecting point between me and the deer so that I can see the screen whether it moves or not. So as a target animal comes into your area, you want to be gathering some pre-roll if you have time. And once you get a few seconds of that, you're going to move over here to your shooting lane as the target approaches. And you lock it in there on your shooting lane. Make sure that you're good and focused up and framed up that you give your space, yourself room for error a little bit there. As the deer enters the shooting lane, you want to have the peace of mind to know your camera's doing what it should be and you can focus on making a great shot. And once you shoot, this is up to your discretion, but this is what I did with the jack film that's part of the full draw film tour now. Deer enters the shooting lane, I shoot and I move to my camera and I'm filming the deer as it leaves the area. Or in the case of jack, as he falls, which is a really cool moment. But that's up to your discretion. If you want to focus on blood trailing or you know where he exited the field, then that's up to your discretion. But uh, you definitely want to be ethical first. Now you can put it in auto mode a lot of times when you're running these cameras and it'll help you out, allow you to do some of the things that you may or may not know. But uh, if you can get good at running in manual mode, you can adjust your aperture and your focus in a lot of these cameras and camcorders to do exactly what you need them to do. Let's talk about a few of those things. So in this case, the focus ring right here is on the front of the lens. And what I will do is I'll set my aperture to a pretty high number, which typically I like to run it if I can get away with it in the eight area, uh, which is your f-stop. Now, um, that allows you to have a greater distance of depth of field so that if you miss focus just a touch, your deer doesn't look like it's out of focus very much. Now if you put it down and crank it down into that 2.8 like this lens will go, uh, you're going to have some trouble sometimes nailing focus because it is just a micro adjustment and you're, you're off. So make sure you're running your f-stop as high as you can get away with, typically in that 8 to 12, 16 range if you can get away with it. Um, use your ISO, which is um, it's artificial light, artificial light gain. Um, and that's going to allow you to have more light with a higher f-stop. Now, you don't want to get too high on the ISO and you want to know your camera because it can get grainy with that artificial light. 
So you want to stay wherever that number is for you. So when we're talking about framing here, one thing we want to know is that we've got our shooting lane here and it's hard when you're self filming to get a deer right where you need it as you're trying to shoot the deer. So we're going to zoom out a touch and try to encompass our entire shooting lane in the footage there. That way, at any point that you can shoot that deer within that shooting lane, you can also see it here with the camera. You've heard us mention pre-roll so far. We have another term called B-roll, which, um, you know, your action and stuff like that that happens when the deer comes in, you know, that is what is happening at the moment. But you want to tell the story with your B-roll. Your B-roll could be anything from an interview to the foliage, the time of year, anything that shows what time of year you were in the stand. Um, and it could show you walking to your stand. It's all the little things that tell the story of how you got to where you are when you're shooting that deer. The goal in any film is to tell the story, but it's up to you to decide what your real goal is when you're self-filming. You know, do you intend to be in the full draw film tour? Um, do you want to do it professionally? Do you want to be a hunting celebrity that hunts deer and is on camera? Or do you just want to do it for the legacy for your children to watch, for you to watch, for your family to enjoy? You know, that's all up to you. None of it's right or wrong, um, but you need to decide that going into this self-filming game so that you know exactly how much you want to put into it from a finance standpoint and from an effort standpoint. And at that point, you can know exactly how you're going to go about this thing, what you need to capture, what you want to capture, and how your film turns out. For more information on a lightweight and innovative system, make sure you go to 4therrowcamerarms.com and look up their carbon arm, among any of their other innovative products. To see our film, One-Eyed Jack, make sure you go to Full Draw Film Tour and find a showing near you. This is your element. Live in it.